Hi friends, in many use cases and applications, uh, we might need to mask the private data and protect the personally identifiable information called as PII. Okay. So Microsoft, they have developed a very nice library called Presidio uh, for detecting and anonymizing the uh, private and uh, PII data. Now in one of the earlier videos, we have used Presidio, but that was through Langchain uh, wrapper. Okay. So whenever we want to provide the context to an LLM model, uh, we might want to again uh, mask the PII, right? So there we have used Presidio through Langchain wrapper. Now today, uh, but we might need to do the same uh, in other applications which has nothing to do with LLMs or Langchain, right? So we will look at the Presidio uh, as it is. Uh, it works slightly differently, uh, so we will see uh, today. All right. Uh, in addition to Presidio, uh, we also need uh, this Faker library because Presidio, it simply masks the information. But in some cases, we might want to replace it with a fake name, fake address, etc. Right. So to generate the data, uh, we will be using the Faker library. Okay. So the Presidio, it works in two steps. One, it has an analyzer. So from Presidio analyzer, uh, we are importing the analyzer engine. Okay. And then we have anonymizer so in step one we will identify uh, what is pii and in step two we mask that information okay so uh, that's why we have uh, imported the analyzer and also anonymizer okay now this pattern recognizer and pattern it has a set of predefined patterns but we might have some custom patterns right for example let's say uh, we live in a, a country where we have uh, the passport or maybe the driving license uh, follow a particular pattern right presidio may not be aware of that pattern so using this pattern and pattern recognizer we can add our own custom uh, patterns all right and through this operator uh, we will generate the we will add the fake data uh, to the uh, original documents okay all right so here uh, we are instantiating uh, the faker, analyzer, and anonymizer. Now let's say this is our original document. Now Presidio, it works with both the PDF documents and images as well. But for simplicity, here we are taking uh, some text document. Okay. So here we have a date, uh, some name. Uh, so this is uh, a complaint written to law enforcement officer saying, hey, I am so and so. Uh, I have lost my wallet. Uh, the wallet has uh, some ID card, some banks, uh, some driving license, uh, etc. Okay, so it has lots of uh, the private and this PII data, right? It, it also contains uh, the date, times, uh, etc. All right, uh, it un contains emails as well. Okay, now uh, through Analyzer, uh, we simply provide our original text and we need to explicitly state uh, the language. Okay and this is what we get so we get a list uh, in this result here we are printing the elements one by one so that we can see clearly so what it does is it says uh, the type of the information it identified for example the credit card uh, the bank uh, a code email address uh, so and so forth right and it also has the starting and ending character uh, in addition to the score so as you can see uh, for most of the detections the score is uh, let's say uh, very high right as 0 0.75 uh, in debo there will be some attributes which it, it it may not be sure right for example is it a driving license number or is it a, a some other id maybe uh, some health card number uh, things like that right for example if you look at uh, the third one from the bottom uh, the actual value is this now the presidio uh, with zero per 0.4% confidence it is saying uh, it's a driver license and it giving very small confidence that it could be a passport or a bank number as well okay so if you look at that piece of text uh, it's somewhere here right now notice that Presidio it's not an LLM model it's not trying to understand this natural language right if if it so then it could have easily identified this as a driving uh, driver's license, right? 
but because it is not based on LLM model, uh, uh, it is based on some set, set, certain set of rules. It has identified this as a driver license, but with uh, low confidence as compared to, for example, name or email ID, etc. Okay. Now maybe we can combine LLM capabilities with Presidio to have much better uh, accurate uh, detections of PII. Okay. All right. So here we have simply written a helper function which which takes the text generated. Uh, so Presidio, what it does is when we anonymize the text, here we pass the original document and the output from the analyzer. So as you saw here, in step number one, we have called the analyzer by providing the original document. So here we have the analyzer results. And in step number two, we call the anonymizer by providing the original documents as well as the analyzer results, right? So what it does is, wherever it finds this PII uh, from based on this information, what it is and the starting and ending character, okay? Uh, it create these angle brackets and replace the actual values with the type of PII it is. Now, here we wrote a very simple helper function which identify these angle brackets, open and close angle brackets and print the text uh, in a red color so that we can clearly and easily see what all it has identified, okay? So it has identified date, time, person, uh, some location, uh, the credit cards, a US driver license, uh, social security number, again, another date, time, email address, email address, and the person name, uh, so and so forth, right? So it, it has done a very good job. And here there is this Polish ID. Since anonymizer don't know the identity cards of all the countries, it could not identify this as also PII, right? So there may be some scenarios where we might need to create our own custom rules. Okay, so that's what we are going to do next. So here we are defining a pattern for Polish ID. Uh, we give it a name, Polish ID pattern. And the regex, uh, which is simply the pattern, uh, what we are saying is it would should contain three alphabets followed by six digits. Okay, that's what our that's how our Polish ID looks like, right? So here we have three alphabets followed by six digits. Okay, and here we are creating another one. For example, let me show the original document. So here we have the date, and then here we have the time. Now both are identified as date time. Okay, so if you look at here, this one is identified as date time, and this one, which is actually the time, is also identified as date time. Now again, uh, we might want to differentiate these two. So here we are creating a pattern for time, uh, which is simply uh, the hour, uh, the minute, uh, sorry, hour, minute, and is it AM or PM. So we have defined two custom patterns, right? And we add these patterns to the pattern recognizer, okay? And then we are reinitializing the analyzer, uh, which is what step number one does, right? And we have added uh, these to pattern recognizer to analyzer, okay? This time our pattern recognizer or analyzer should be able to identify the Polish ID as well as uh, the time which is different from date time, okay? So we are doing exactly the same thing in step number one, provide the document uh, to the analyzer and in step number two, uh, simply take these results and provide as input, okay? All right, so let's see, so this is good. It has identified this as a Polish ID and then uh, this one I is identified as time. Okay, so our two new patterns uh, defined here uh, working well uh, with the uh, procedure. And finally, instead of having an output text like this, we may want to replace uh, it with some fake actual fake values, right? For example, rather than saying this angle bracket date time, we might want to have a date uh, time uh, here. And here we want to have a person name, right? Which is different from the original document. So that's where we use the faker library. So this is uh, the faker. It has lots of uh, functions. Uh, uh, for example, creating the names. Okay, let me, yeah. 
so let's start here so it has name we can create a, uh, the gender male female etc and then we can create passport numbers uh, uh, the ids the we can create pass password passwords uh, so and so forth right credit card banks uh, so and so forth anything you can think of pii or private information we can create using the faker now using it is very simple you simply call fake dot what you want to create and it will do that so here but here we are creating a custom function uh, i'll tell you why in a second so here uh, it's fake dot name that will create uh, uh, a fake name right fake dot name is an inbuilt function uh, comes with uh, the faker library but remember we have uh, defined two custom patterns right polish id and time so if we want to replace uh, those two with some fake data we need similar to how we informed presidio those two patterns we should make our faker also aware of those two patterns right so that's why here we are creating two functions so the first one is the polish id and three alphabets and six numerics okay and then uh, we are making it uppercase and for the time it should be hours minutes and am or pm so calling these three functions it will produce a name a polish id and a time uh, in this format now this one is coming from inbuilt function and these two our custom defined uh, patterns now uh, before we anonymize the text uh, so earlier this is what we have done right we have provided the original document and then we have provided these anonymizer results but this time we are going to provide an additional uh, variable called this operators right so here we are using faker for creating these operators which is simply hey wherever you find a person replace it with a faker name okay so the reason we created this function is because in our document the name of have appeared multiple times right so here we are using this lambda functions so every time you see a person name replace that person name with a fake name generated using faker okay similarly phone number email address polish id and time now as you have seen here we have many other types of uh, pii as well right for example here we have the credit card the bank us driver license uh, phone number uh, email address uh, so and also this uk nhs uh, etc right but here we have created providing the operators only for these five or six uh, uh, identity types so what it does is when we call the anonymizer only for those which have been provided the operator it will replace those values for example here we are supposed to have a person name but it has replaced with some fake name Rebecca uh, or Tage. but it has left the date time as it is because uh, we haven't provided that in the operator so if you want to anonymize everything which has been detected by presidio you have to create uh, those operators okay i wish uh, uh, it faker automatically detect what's been identified presidio and automatically replace uh, without providing explicitly all these operators but currently that's how it is we need to explicitly provide uh, all these operators whereas if we are using the lang chain wrapper uh, we don't need to provide this i mean we need to provide only the polish id and and time because those two are our custom defined one but for this uh, uh, the name phone number email address the date times etc uh, it has inbuilt into it uh, so it automatically replaces but if you are using the standard presidio library uh, you need to define uh, these operators okay so as you can see uh, that's how uh, we can anonymize the data uh, it's very very simple uh, we use this analyzer engine to analyze the document which identify the private data and then anonymizer simply mask those values now rather than having uh, uh, the mask if we want to have some fake data we can use faker in conjunction with presidio uh, to generate uh, data like this which has uh, fake data uh, instead of uh, the labels like this 
okay uh, so that's all uh, thank you very much